I love this man from the depth of my heart. Amen. Um, I'm not afraid to call him my brother. Amen. Even when church was just a few months old, he used to come and be a blessing to us. And that covenant we've caught together has been established for more than a decade now because we've known each other since while we were in school in Zaria. They are men. They are men, like John the Baptist. They were anointed from their womb. Their mother's womb. Amen. The most profound thing about him is his voice. His voice calls everything about God in you. You don't even need to see his face. All you need is for one person to send you one of his messages. And it will call everything that God has put on the inside of you. He's an amazing man. Yet, yet, very, very humble. Very humble. Very humble. Some of the things we enjoy, some of the things we experience as a people is because of the grace upon his life. I'm not ashamed to say that. He's truly a blessed man. Amen. I don't, when it comes to ministry, I don't relate to him as a friend. When we sit together, we can talk as brothers. But when it comes to ministry, I never relate to him as a friend. I don't want to be familiar with the grace of God upon his life. I relate to him as an apostle of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I think it's an honor and a privilege for us to have him in Shouts 2019. <laughs> with Jesus' joy. Shout 2019 celebration. Help me celebrate Apostle Joshua. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I am, I really am honored to be here. Pastor, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I want to celebrate every man and every woman of God here. I truly honor every one of you. And I was so blessed just listening to the worshipers, one worshiper after another. I, I almost didn't want to come out, honestly. I was just you know, most times I hardly go for meetings and receive. I'm always the one giving. So receiving is a real privilege for me. Thank you so much. May God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I will only be here for a few minutes this morning, but I trust in the name of the Lord that the encounter will change our lives. In Jesus' name. Let's hold hands together and just pray for a few minutes and then we'll sit. Just lift your voice and pray. Call upon the God 
who hears the God who is able to give beauty for ashes joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness Hallelujah. One of the revelations, you know, in, in, every, in every season of my life, there is always something God is saying to me. There is always a dealing of God in my life. There is always a dimension of His grace that He's revealing to me. Sometimes it can be His power. Sometimes it can be His wisdom. Sometimes it can be A dimension of him it could be anything but in the last two three months afresh as though I never knew him and I never knew it God has been revealing to me the love of God you know Paul said the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and then he said the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that it will abide with you so I have for me it's not just because I'm a minister, but it's been a revelation afresh. The Lord has opened my spiritual understanding to the depth of the love of God. You know, Paul said it, and many times we think we understood what he was saying. It is true that time does not change anything, but time truly reveals, and time helps you understand. As I see the faithfulness of God in my life, and I see what he's helped me do in the lives of people and even in a generation. I am really broken. I'm humbled. I'm many things to many people. But I am more concerned about what I am to him. And it's amazing how far God can go. This is a very powerful message. No shadow you will light up. Mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. It's my testimony. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Hey. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. All the overwhelming, never ending. All we chase is me down, fight still and found, leaves the ninety nine. Thank you, Jesus. Still you. All the overwhelming Father reveal your love once again grant us grace to rejoice and to joy in all that you are and all that you have made us become we give you praise even this morning in the name of Jesus please be seated Hallelujah. In Revelation chapter 5, John had the privilege of coming up to the throne room and he experienced the worship of the Lamb and of the Ancient of Days. And John said, I wept for no man was worthy to open the book. I wept. 
and the reason why I wept was because no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the seals then an elder tapped him and said weep not for the lion of the tribe of Judah the root of David has prevailed we're about to open the book and that means that the weeping of someone must come to end this morning in the name of Jesus when the book is open there is no more weeping I want to talk very briefly about a very deep spiritual mystery very profound spiritual mystery in the kingdom we learn God by the dimensions of him captured in mysteries a mystery is a hidden truth that is only privy to a people who belong to a group belong to a cult belong to a fraternity and in the kingdom we have been granted access to learn God and he broke himself into dimensions this is Jesus the way he reveals himself He's a compendium of mysteries and so he helps you to learn him and to learn the kingdom by unfolding his operations his modus operandi we call it mysteries and one of it is what I want to share very briefly tonight the oil of joy Habakkuk chapter 3 please the prophet was communicating something that looked like a very unpleasant situation Habakkuk chapter 3 we'll start our reading from verse 17 Habakkuk okay you don't have a project in here oh dear Habakkuk chapter 3 we we'll start from verse 17 if it's projected and you can see just shout amen so that I know yeah. all right so go ahead and read one two read please uh-huh hold on notice that he's talking here about harvests He's talking here about results. He's talking here about fruitfulness. He's talking here about disappointed expectations. Are we together? There is no disappointment when there is no expectation. And so he starts by saying, although, that means he begins to list several scenarios that you can have. Let's read on again. Ready? One to read, please. Uh-huh. next verse hold on yet yet I will rejoice although this and that and that will not happen yet that means that by default I should not rejoice under that kind of condition are we together now in light of all that he's listing I should not have any reason to rejoice and then he says yet I will rejoice and he shares a very powerful revelation read on please and I will joy in the God of my salvation he never said I will joy in the God of heaven now I hope you know that one of the ways we know God is through his names he captures his possibilities in his names the God of Abraham is not the God of Isaac. The God of Isaac is not the God of Jacob. That means the dimension you will see when the God of Abraham shows up is not the same thing you will see when the God of Isaac shows up. So he's saying here that when it has to do with these situations, I do not rejoice because I am happy seeing them. There is a revelation that sponsors my consistency that there is something I know about God called the God of my salvation. Are we together now? 
So the prophet starts by opening up a scenario that reflects tragedy, pain, defeat, loss, disappointment. And then he says, in the midst of it, this is my position, yet I will rejoice. And then he says, I will not just rejoice blindly. My joy is tied to a revelation that the name of God is also the God of salvation. Is the word Yehoshua, the one who saves. That's where you get the word Joshua from. The one who has the ability to save. That means my joy is hinged on a revelation that it is possible to look at the things that are unseen. That although I am seeing a scenario that does not reflect what I desire, it is within the power of God to turn things around. And so I do not waste my time mourning on things that can be changed. Please follow me very carefully. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation the one who is able to turn the wilderness to a fruitful ground the one who is able to turn things around the oil of joy proverbs chapter 17 please and verse 22 proverbs chapter 17 and verse 22 ready please read one to read a merry heart do it good like medicine uh-huh now there is a powerful revelation there that a merry heart is therapeutic a merry heart has an advantage to your life an advantage to your christian experience that is simply is in the similitude of what medicine would do to a sick patient watch this now He's talking about strength. He's talking about vitality. And he's saying that when a man's heart is merry, that is able to supply strength akin to a doctor's prescribing medicine to a sick patient. But then he says, a broken spirit can dry the bones. That means something can start from the realm of the spirit and affect you physically. That the depression can start from the realm of the spirit and dry you up physically you begin to wither like a tree that is cursed and the bible says the result is that something about a merry heart has been detached from your life proverbs chapter 18 18 and verse 14 proverbs 18 14 please proverbs 18 14 a man's spirit can endure sickness let's use this for now okay thank you it says the spirit of a man will what help me sustain his infirmity but a wounded spirit who can bear that means there is no man on earth who sustains the ability to indefinitely bear a broken or a wounded spirit now please follow this this is a very serious diagnosis about man these men are bringing dimensions and they are saying something about the absence of joy and merriment in a man's life can literally lead that man to death psalms 45 and verse 6 blessed be the name of the lord psalms 45 and verse 6 it says thy throne O God please look up is forever and ever an everlasting throne the scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter next verse verse 7 now thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness are we there and then he says Therefore, God, we're reading verse 7, Thy God hath anointed you with a kind of oil that is called the oil of gladness. And that that oil ensures that you are always above your fellows. Now, listen very carefully. Remember, he's talking about rulership and the longevity of dominion. That your throne 
and the scope of your dominion and influence is everlasting and that the mystery behind it is that an oil was placed upon your life he calls it the oil of gladness that because you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness the reward I have given you to keep your throne everlasting is to put an oil of gladness upon you that sets you above thy fellows. The oil of gladness. Go to Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah chapter 61 is the messianic prophecy. It speaks about Jesus in prophecy and then by extension the church. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. It starts from verse 1, Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 1. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Please look up. Because the Lord hath anointed me. So we are talking about an ordination, an anointing. And it begins to list all the things that the anointing should produce. Number one, to preach glad tidings to the meek. Number two, he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Number three, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Number four, the opening of prison to them that are bound. Verse two, please. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. Next verse, verse three. Please look up. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. How does he solve their problem? to give them beauty for ashes uh-huh the oil he's not giving them joy he's giving them the oil of joy for mourning he's giving them the oil of joy for mourning and then the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness as a result of these equippings the bible says they will be called the oaks of righteousness the planting of our god and then in that he will be glorified the oil of joy the oil of gladness joy is a revelation in the dealings of God with men that very few people have understood very few people have understood the mystery and the role that joy plays in granting that a believer walks in the experience of victory now please follow me very carefully you're dealing with a meeting here that talks about shouting and I want to show you the mystery of joy joy is a requirement to get the intervention of god in a man's life it is not only faith it is not only prayer joy is a principal requirement if a man will experience the hand of god the bible tells us in philippians chapter 4 and verse 4 that we should rejoice in the lord always rejoice in the lord always and again i repeat rejoice he never said rejoice in results rejoice in the lord there is a name he is called the god of salvation rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice apostle james now was talking to us in chapter 1 and verse 2 james chapter 1 and verse 2 he says to count it all joy brethren he's mentoring believers and he's saying my brethren count it all joy not all loss when you fall into diverse temptations count it reckon it express joy in the midst of it and the revelation is in verse 3 it says knowing this that means there must be something you know for your joy to be there knowing this you are privy to an information that keeps you consistent regardless of results knowing this there is something you have to know for you to be unbending why should i stand in the midst of pain and still rejoice why should i lose a loved one and still rejoice why should i stand in the midst of obvious shame and disappointment and still rejoice why should i be a testimony of doom 
and still rejoice he says knowing this there are things that you know he said for we know that all things they may not know but we are privy to this information that all things can work together for them that love the Lord and those who are the called according to his purposes now look up please it is natural for men to mourn Jesus himself wept are we together Jesus wept at funerals Jesus was angry when a tree did not produce the kind of food he needed to eat so we see that the humanity of Jesus played out in his earthly ministry and so people can get angry people can weep but God is teaching us a lesson that there is a position that a believer can stand you can posture yourself by revelation and you will always win not just in the battles of life but you will find yourself consistently walking in victory in this kingdom and the bible says for anyone at all who by intelligence can access this oil that the bible calls the oil of joy you must be anointed to be joyful joy is not something that humans can do all the time it is not given to men to be consistent regardless of circumstances please look up the reality of our humanity does not allow us to laugh and marry all the time when you stand before a dead body of your loved one and you laugh and rejoice they will call for a meeting and ask you what sponsored that wicked disposition as they would call it if you stand in the midst of fire and stand in the midst of pain and laugh and rejoice the bible testifies that you are not normal are we together now yes that means that when i see something that gladdens my heart i rejoice when i see something that causes pain i should not rejoice i should follow through but when a believer remains consistent regardless of the vacillations of our results the bible says that there is a grace that sponsors that consistency it is called the oil of joy thy throne O god is forever because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness god even thy god hath anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows joy is a requirement for supernatural intervention god does not intervene just because he's a mighty god there are requirements that mandate and allow his presence to come listen very carefully the bible tells us that paul and silas were two people who on account of the gospel are we together now they were held bound with chains hand and feet and the bible says they were kept in custody of a jailer they knew listen with the kind of pain and humiliation that they had gone through there was no reason to even pray but the bible says at midnight at midnight they knew that if they would get god to intervene they must engage this principle and the bible says paul and silas prayed they didn't pray because they were served dinner they didn't pray because the jailer said i will smuggle you out the bible says they prayed and they sang in the midst of it remember that there is a law in this kingdom you only reap when there is joy there is no guarantee for a harvest even if you planted a seed until joy allows it he says that those that sow in tears they will reap not with joy in joy it's a realm that allows harvest please follow me very carefully and so they began to rejoice in the Lord and then the Bible says that there was an earthquake and suddenly the chains fell off and the jailer wanted to kill himself and he said no 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 we are here we are safe there's no need to hurry if you bind us again it's a principle that works all the time there is no hurry we we have mastered the art of bringing ourselves out of any prison that when we're in the prison we don't talk about the prison because the name of god under situations of pain is the god of salvation yahushua the one who can show up 
and bring salvation and save to the uttermost the oil of joy the oil of gladness listen very carefully there are two things that joy produces in the life of a believer that i want to just touch on and then we'll pray number one according to nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10 joy is the principal sponsor of the strength of a believer nehemiah chapter 8 please and verse 10 it says neither be ye sorry don't walk as if there is no hope it says for the joy of the lord is your strength please say that with me mina the joy of the lord is my strength one more time the joy of the lord is my strength it says neither be ye sorry that means there is a way out of that tragedy there is a way out of that situation and it says the joy your strength in this kingdom is the joy of the lord remember the bible testifies that if you turn aside in the day of battle the diagnosis is that your strength is small paul prayed a prayer and pray that the believers be strengthened in their inner man. And I'm showing you that one of the systems that make for strength is that you must be full of joy. That the joy of the Lord supplies strength. What is strength? The stamina, the fortitude to remain until you win. It's called strength. But the people that do know their God, the Bible says, they shall be strong. There are times that the battles of life are not won overnight. It may take time. Oh, Abraham, you may need 25 years. Do you have the stamina to wait? If you cannot wait, you will always give birth to what will fight your promise. When your strength is weak, Ishmael will come and interrupt what Isaac should become and do. It takes strength. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait. Waiting is the hardest thing for a believer to do. Not praying, not fasting, waiting. Because five minutes to your breakthrough, it will still not look like it. It takes stamina. Please listen to me. It takes stamina to remain when your wife cannot take in after two, three years. All kinds of options begin to fly. And when you go to God, he will tell you what he told you before the marriage and act like he's not aware of what is happening. It takes strength in the spirit to remain. It takes strength in the spirit to remain when the ministry is not growing. And having invested efforts and everything, you're not getting the kind of result you should get. You usually will feel like giving up. But the joy of the Lord that is based on a revelation. Ah. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by not our deliverer i don't know what you believe in the bible says some trust in horses everybody cannot trust in the name of our god some trust in horses some chariots but for us and for me i know that though he slay me i will trust him i know that it is within his power to save me huh. say to those that are fearful hearted do not lose your faith. The Lord your God is strong and with his mighty hands when you call on his name. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. Say to the weary ones, your God will surely come. He will come and save you. 
the Bible already tells us that while we look not at the things that are seen, that means the things that are seen can deceive. They act like they will remain forever. The poverty will act like it cannot go. The challenge will, let me tell you, challenges are bold. They have an audacity that intimidates. There is something about God you need to sponsor your stamina while they stare at you. Every challenge looks immovable until God comes. Please listen to me. The joy of the Lord is your strength. A man can be depressed. Have you seen lately the rate at which people literally, I mean, they depress themselves to death. They go to the hospital and they cannot find out what is wrong. And the person will tell you, I cannot think. I'm, I'm just depressed. Notice that the character of depression is that it brings you to a point of silence. Where you cannot talk, you cannot celebrate. Hmm. The joy of the Lord, bringing strength and vitality. Lord, I don't know how I'm going to come out of this situation, but I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. The Bible speaks about scripture. And says, all things that are written aforetime, please look at me. He said that they are for our learning, so that we, through the comfort of Scripture, might find hope. The meaning of that is that there are times in your life where you do not know and you are not sure whether or not God can show up over that issue. The Bible tells you to make reference to Scripture and check. Has God showed up for someone like that? If he did it before, he can do it again. Same God back then, same God right now. If he did it before, he can do it again. Same God back then, same God right now. In the Bible, God lifted men. In the Bible, God delivered men. In the Bible, people slept as prisoners and woke up as prime ministers. In the Bible, women who were village girls within months became the wives of kings. In the Bible, farmers became prophets. In the Bible, prostitutes joined the lineage of Jesus. The Bible says that these are archives to encourage you to sponsor joy. So that if and when I do not know how my life is going and I cannot explain what is happening, I can check through scripture and say, I know God is faithful. Jehoshua, the God of my salvation, he will show up for me. And as bold as this challenge looks, I know that if I join to cry, listen, the moment there is weeping, God's power cannot come. It takes joy. Joy is a magnet. Listen to me. I know that it is human to cry. It is human to grieve. But it's a spirit that continues to drive breakthrough away from you. You must sustain an impartation that grants you the grace to smile through storms. You don't smile because things have changed. You smile and rejoice to change them. If you wait for things to change, for you to have joy, then they will never change. That's why it's called joy in the Holy Ghost. It is, it, it is a possibility that comes from a dimension that is not normal for men to have. Please listen to what I tell you. I have seen this in my life and I've seen this even while I minister. That people who are sad and angry and frustrated and gloomy almost never receive. God has to find a way to prime their joy. And if it does not work, the anointing comes directly on them to laugh. Laugh, laugh away space for God to come and bless them. Because it, it seems as though their, their hearts are close towards the things of God. Joy is powerful. Hallelujah. 
the joy of the Lord is your strength. The first thing joy does is to produce health and vitality. It is true that when joy dries up, you will be like the tree that has been cursed. Number two. Psalms 67. Joy is responsible for extraordinary fruitfulness. You want your life to be fruitful beyond measure. Joy is a requirement. Psalm 67. We'll start from verse 1. Please give it to us quickly. God is changing someone's life this morning. It says, Be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. Verse 2. That thy way may be known upon the earth, thy saving health among the nations. Verse 3 now. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Verse 4. Oh, let the nations be what? Glad and sing for joy. For thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon the earth. Verse 5. It says, let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Verse 6. Then, not before, then shall the earth. That means while you are mourning, the earth still has the potential to bless you. But your lack of joy will not allow the power of God move upon the earth to bless you. I hope you know that this earth is talking about is not just the ground. Your helper is also made of earth. And there is increase within him. Your destiny helper is a piece of earth that can be used to yield his increase. And the earth, whether as your boss, and the earth, whether as your landlord, and the earth, as any one of your destiny helpers, can yield their increase. And then he says, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. Show me a man who understands the revelation of joy. I show you a man who can turn anything around. Anything around. It sounds very simple. But I tell you, this is at the back of the continuation of the pain and the tragedy of so many people. In ministry, in business, we come back gloomy, we come back angry, and we are frustrated. And you know, you will always find a reason to be unhappy, especially in our side of the world today. You will always find a legitimate reason to be angry. Look at me. Let me tell you this. Did you know that the moment you are frustrated, the natural effect is that you will want to see others frustrated as a way of healing you from that frustration. If you are angry, you will want others to be angry for you to be happy. For some reason, men are designed that way. A happy man will want to produce happy people. An angry person will want to transfer that anger to others. The joy of the Lord is my strength and that when i rejoice the earth can bring its increase there are always legitimate reasons please hear me listen very carefully there are always legitimate reasons why we are angry while we are gloomy it looks like things are not working in around our lives but those who understand the joy of the lord are people who will continue to stand when you look at them you do not know when they are passing through storms and when they are having a very good time there is no difference because they are always happy how are you today bless the lord bless the name of the lord i just heard that your mother went to be with the lord last week yes it's true but i give god glory the lord give it the lord take it blessed be his name so how are you going to do about that rent now well i know that god will provide god is a mighty god he will supply be real be real use your common sense wisdom is profitable to direct i understand that's why the wisdom directed me to be joyful in the lord you see that show me a man listen I teach you what I live by you will never at any point find me sit down in regret trying to say Lord you did not do this Lord you have not yet done this Lord when will you do this Lord have you done this Lord you did not finish doing this my life is ever joyful as a revelation it's a risk to lose joy it's a risk in this kingdom when you lose joy. 
I will sing and I will praise even in my darkest hour through the sorrow and the pain I will sing and I will praise I lift my hands to honor you hear it because your word is true I lift my hands to honor you because your word is true I lift my hands to honor you because your word is true I will see God is not a man meaner he does not lie if he speaks even if it's a mistake it must look like his mistake he he cannot lie Hallelujah. I teach you how to cheat life. I teach you how to play life like a chess. You will always find a reason to not be happy. Listen to me. Things will always find a way of attempting to mock God in your life. The greatest mistake you will make is to turn and start discussing your pain because everything you continue to meditate upon grows and so you find out that the mountain continues to grow turn your back from away from the mountain and focus on Jehoshua the God who is able to save I will rejoice in the God of my salvation he is able to save to the uttermost it was a principle in scripture that the nation of Israel were given as a secret that every time they went to battle and their enemies compassed them and it was clear that defeat was imminent every time they noticed that they were the enemies were greater than them God taught them to drop their swords notice the nation of Israel never fought if it was clear that the enemies were greater than them they used another strategy they would stop and say, worshippers, come to the front. This battle now, if we dare use knives, they will kill us like chickens. We need to engage another mystery. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. It was a chant. It was a formula given to them that when all things fail, invoke the mercy of God and his goodness. And the battle will turn around completely. God is speaking to someone this morning. People have already prophesied your life and they are right. Except for this morning. Everything they said is supposed to happen. Without any effort, you are already in all kinds of traps. But watch the power of joy. Joy is a magnet. It puts pressure on the power of God. It puts pressure on the integrity of God. Son, you have a reason to cry. And yet you refuse to cry. Even if you cry, you turn your cry into a song. And you sing and dance and rejoice. Listen to me. It was the dance of a small girl that removed the head of a prophet. Now, that's very dangerous. A prophet, an army came to attack Elijah. He called fire on them. Yet John the Baptist, the greatest prophet, when a lady rejoiced before a king, his head went for it. Joy. Let me tell you how the Holy Spirit works it. Have you gone to pray sometimes over a situation? You drag yourself to the place of prayer as if you are going for a funeral. And you lock the door and you don't even know how to start. Do I say our Father in heaven? Do I say God have mercy? What, what, what will be the, the starter of my prayer? And suddenly, it looks like a joke while you are praying in tongues. Somewhere in your prayer, it's like an impartation comes joy songs begin to come sometimes songs that are only for that secret place when you finish prayer you cannot remember the songs again and notice not every song will minister to you because at that point the songs are ladders you are climbing your way out without knowing you are not just singing i show you how it works god wants to come 
but your heart is closed in anger, in pain. There is no way you can reap because there is no joy. And then he finds a way by his spirit. He can use a song. He can use something that gives you gladness. And all of a sudden you will find out that a well of joy is in your heart. And usually when that well comes, you will find a song. Listen, one of you know that you are walking in joy when you don't lack songs. Lacking songs is proof that something is wrong with your joy life. It has nothing to do with a, being a musician. You receive these songs and you begin to sing them. Sometimes you cry while you are singing them and Satan, the master of the flesh realm, is projecting the difficulties before you. Finish that prayer and, and address the issue of your child here. Your child is about to die. This is stage four cancer. It's about to kill him. And you forget about your child and begin to sing and begin to rejoice and sometimes you begin to dance like a fool and sometimes you begin to sweat singing and dancing for a long time you are allowing the mighty God the God of your salvation to show up I tell you he will turn things around when you allow him to many years ago we were going to have that would be our first crusade on our way going the program was going to start by five and at about two three we were still on our way going and the car spoiled there was nothing we didn't do to that car the car refused to start and it was not in a place where we would easily get a mechanic it was a very serious situation and then one of us just took the guitar and started to play out of frustration you know just felt what do I stand to lose and he started playing the guitar and then we started praying in tongues and then one person would join then one person would join then one person would join true story I tell you the truth and I lie not eventually we started blasting in tongues and praying such an impartation of joy came upon us did you know they kicked that car it was like a joke and it started like that and took us down to that crusade ground I have seen the power of joy. I have seen people who they have finished employment and it was very clear that they would not get anything. But they went back and said, Lord, you forgot to add my name. Let me remind you. I cannot remind the boss. I don't have his number. I cannot remind the HR department, but I can remind you. I know how to get to you. You know how to get to them. You are called the father of spirits. So I will save myself the stress of looking for a manager and lobbying around. And they lock their door and rejoice and dance like madmen. And while they are doing that, they are allowing the God of their salvation. God will begin to move and say, stand up and change this. Stand up. People have gotten all kinds of victories because they understood joy. Kenneth Copeland asked Bishop Oyedeko one time and said, you claim we are the ones who mentored you in church growth and faith. How come you have all of this large crowd? And Bishop Oyedeko, according to him, he laughed and said, I danced every one of these people. I danced them one by one in the spirit. You can dance your prosperity you can dance your healing. You can dance your child. You can sing your victory. You can sing the key that is missing to enter your hand back. Where is the key that opens this door? It's missing. I tried to search and I did not find it. I maintain my joy. And with that joy, there will always be restoration. Yet, I will rejoice. Yet, I got the report, but yet I will rejoice. There's somebody in this nation, I will not mention the name. The first time he produced his album, it was as if he, he produced it just for his family members. After the labor, you can imagine how painful that kind of thing is. When you invest time, energy, and all you know to do. And he got in touch with me and said, Apostle, I don't understand the meaning of this nonsense. God called me, I'm sure I'm called into the music ministry. And I told him, I said, don't worry, my friend, rejoice sing the same songs sing them alone in your room if nobody is inviting you rejoice and while that guy began to rejoice god gave him one song that has opened him up now and opened the nations for him please do not underestimate the power of joy
there are things that have happened in my life on account of joy. You can lock yourself in the room and open every other door. While you are locked, you are opening doors, strange doors, that people will say, how are you doing it? It is the power of joy, the joy of the Lord, being your strength. There are people who die before they die. There are people who fall before they fall. They give up easily at life. Preachers packing up saying, look, I'm tired of this ministry. Business people going down. All kinds of people going down. But let me tell you this, hear me. The Bible says the shouts of joy and victory will not depart from the tent of the righteous. It was that shout of joy that made them victorious in the first place. So if they keep it and it becomes their habitation, then there will be no reason again for mourning. When I found this principle in my life, I knew that I found my way out of trouble. Every time I am in the midst of anything that looks unpleasant, whether for me, whether for ministry, whether for my family, I don't have the time to sit down and discuss and say, Kai, you see the way this life is. Nigeria, huh? this is November. Look at the way my life is. You talk like that is exactly what you will see. Is God speaking to us? Apostle, you don't know the situation I'm at now. I'm not even sure if I'm still a student or not. The last time I saw the carryovers, I couldn't even see the end. I just turned my face and left. Are we together? Apostle, you don't know how many people I'm owing right now. I'm owing millions and billions. I cannot even sleep. It's a choice. Listen to me. Let me tell you this. If crying does not solve the problem, try joy. Because in any case, you are already in trouble. So don't be afraid to explore. You are already in trouble. There should not be fear when your fear has met you. You should have the courage to explore. The rent must be paid. It's 500,000. How much do you have now? 7,000, home and abroad. Have the freedom to explore because in any case you are in trouble. You have tried crying. You called your uncle. He said, you didn't call me last week. I'm so sorry. If you had only called me last week. But you can turn back and say, Lord, I don't know the name of the trouble I'm in, but I know the name of the Lord God that is a strong tower and I choose to rejoice. Makapo shala branda katea. And while you are saying that all kinds of calls that are threatening you are coming and you are rejoicing, somewhere along the line, Yehoshua, the God that saves, will show up. He will show up like a mighty man of war that he is and turn things around. I have seen this in ministry. I have seen this in life. I've shared my testimony when I, I, was, I was shown a vision of my mother's funeral. I was watching in a vision like I'm watching people. My mother's funeral, case closed. People were crying. Don't feel bad if you've lost your loved one. I saw everything go down and I was so touched. And when everything was done, I prayed after prophesying. I celebrated God and rejoiced. Let me tell you, my mother is healthier than many of you in this place. She's alive. It's true. Very healthy, very agile. It's possible she's even following this meeting now. Health and vitality. The mortality rate in Africa continues to drop because of this. Although we are the happiest people, they say, Yet we are the ones that die more. That means we need to check what we are doing. Are we together now? Yes. Have you seen people drive themselves to death? Alone on the road. He's driving and he's calculating. 75,000 plus 850. Uh, roughly five. And then the next thing, he's dead. You see young people walk on the road as if they are mad. They stand on the road and they are just calculating. 900,000. Ah, is it not supposed to be all? And you are saying, what, what are you doing, sir? It, no, no, no. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I refuse to act like one who does not have a Savior. Savior, He can move a mountain. My God is mighty to save. 
you are mighty to say forever author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave jesus sing one time savior savior he can move the mountain my god is mighty to say you are mighty to save forever the author of salvation you rose and conquered the grave so when persecution comes count it all joy they meet you in the office and say do you know that they are discussing you right now we're about downsizing and I clearly heard them calling your name. You say, no problem, God is faithful. No. Hey! So this is how this life will be. No, no, no. Somebody shout, no way. Don't give the devil permission to destroy the word of God concerning your life. Insist, maintain your space, gather your strength and stand. I will not bend Satan, you will not see my tears, not for you. I will cry before the Lord and I will worship, but not for you. I know there are mountains all before me, but I trust in the Lord with all my heart. And I lean not on my own understanding, the Bible says, in all my ways, I acknowledge him and he shall direct my path. He says, be not wise in your own understanding. He says, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. I know that my Redeemer lives. And I know that God will arise as a mighty man. The psalmist said, many are they that trouble me. Psalm 3. Many are they that rise up against me. But here is his testimony. But thou, O Lord, he says, you are a shield for me. That you are my glory. Here is the prophecy. The lifter up of my head the lifter up of my head. While you are discussing Jesus that died, he only died for three days. He didn't die forever. While you are discussing the Jesus that died, he's already a, he's arisen already. The men in Emmaus were talking about the Jesus that died, whereas he had risen. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. I may fall, but even in the pit I rejoice. Listen to me. Joy is powerful. He put a new song in my mouth. The Bible says the song of praise to our God. It says many will see and fear and put their trust in him. This is my life. I truly live a very peaceful life. And I truly live a very joyful life. There's a joy that I have in spite of all the sadness that surrounds me and this joy in my heart only comes alive every time I hear your voice there's a peace in my heart in spite of all the troubles that surrounds me and this peace in my soul only comes alive every time I hear your voice it comes it comes alive every time I hear your voice comes it comes alive every time i hear your voice his voice brings joy it lets me know that things will not always be like this it lets tomorrow is the gift god gave you to correct yesterday your yesterday may not be the best but he gives you the gift of tomorrow as proof that he loves you please listen to me mina you have to learn this that for the rest of your life you will vow that the joy of the lord is my strength say it after me 
that when you face a news that is unpleasant, your testimony is that the joy of the Lord, I cannot lose strength. I cannot lose strength. It is too risky to lose strength. It is a risk to lose joy. I stand in joy because it is in joy that my harvest comes. I know he will show up. My joy knowing this. Count it all joy, brethren, when you face diverse temptations knowing this. There is an information you know that God who is your deliverer is coming. Listen, the love of God is very powerful. He says, I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. God is not ashamed to express how vulnerable he is towards you. And he's saying, I can chase you that far. Sometimes I demand that you call me, but even if you don't call me, my jealousy towards you will make me to hide my pride and come running after you. The joy of the Lord. Many of you right now seated here, I know I'm going to pray for you shortly, but many people are already discouraged. November, nothing to show forth in my life. Finances, zero. Children, zero. Lord, you gave me a word this year that by now I will have a child, and now I don't have the child. Lord, you said you were going to correct my finances. Lord, you said you will bless my family. And November, things are worse than they were January. Let me teach you what to do. Even if you cry, cry in joy. Vow that you will never complain. Satan, you will not hear me communicate sorrow. You will only hear a song from my heart to the heavens. Because I know that my Redeemer is true. Let the weak say, he didn't say, let the weak explain why they are weak. Let the weak say, I am strong. Please understand what I'm telling you. If everything leaves my life, there are two things that will remain. God and joy. Leave these two things in my life and everything will come back again. I assure you. Yes, sir. Joy 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 god wants you to have joy the joy of the holy spirit you are full of joy you are bubbling you get up in the morning and you are not afraid of waking up because you now be aware of all the problems in your life lord i thank you hallelujah it's a great day you find a song and you are singing and while you are singing you are, the devil is reminding you he's a master of the sense realm and so he continues to him to remind you you're a man of god you go to preach and at the end of your preaching it looks like you just went to deliver a lecture you make an altar call and people are going out instead of coming towards the altar and you are wondering what in the what in the world did i do is this a sermon is it, what what did i do and you go back depressed and the devil says, I told you, you are not in ministry. Humble yourself and go and reapply for a job or do something meaningful with your life. And you raise a song. Find any kind of song. If there's no song, just whom anything. Find a way of expressing yourself. Because you leave, Jesus, I leave. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings Because you leave, Jesus, I leave today I leave to praise your name I leave to praise your name I have no fear of what tomorrow brings God is speaking to someone this morning. I live to praise your name. And I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Because you live, Jesus, I live today. I live to praise your name. The God that I know quarter to shame here he comes your assignment is to keep rejoicing as proof of faith ha. you're not a man no 
You're not a man, oh. You're the God who opens doors no man can shut. You're not a man, no. You're not a man, no. You're the God of everything, no one like you. No one like you, Jesus. No one like you. No one like you, say no one like you. No one like you, Father. No one like you, Master. You're the God of everything. No one like you. There are times you don't need to sing to God. You need to sing to the mountain. There are times you don't need to talk to God. The problem is not him. The problem is you and the mountain. He's coming to assist. Mountain, while I wait for God to come, let me prophesy to you like Goliath. This is how you will be moved out of my life. And I will dance before you because these Egyptians that I see today, I will see no more forever. Hallelujah. I have seen God show up for people by reason of ministry. I'm involved in the life of so many people. And I'm telling you sometimes, even as men of faith, when you see the reality of people's challenges, your heart drops. You almost want, you are, you are careful to pray because you suspect it won't work. Son of man, can these bones live? Elijah, uh, Ezekiel said, don't, don't, don't drag me into this issue. You are the only one who knows this kind of situation i'm a prophet but god don't disgrace me i don't even know where the bones are where are they you are saying can these bones live the bones are under the earth if they were gathered in one place i may believe and he said let me show you how powerful i am she sang it well you are the mighty god Hey, Latobiju, you are the glorious God. Alagmara, you are the mighty God. When Jesus was born, the angels came to sing and rejoice. They announced glad tidings upon the earth. Joy was very important to sustain Jesus. Very important. Believers, hear me. The spirit of depression is moving like a cloud across Africa and across Nigeria. Even strong men are falling because there is no joy. The devil continues to emphasize what you are seeing because he knows that we, the realm of the senses is where Satan defeats many. He will show you things and give you reasons why you should not rejoice. And the truth is that the challenges that stand before you, they are real. So they will bring you to a point of silence where you will count God unfaithful. You may not say it, but you have said it. So before he puts words in your mouth, put a song in your own mouth. Are we together now? I vowed a vow in my life that I will never open my mouth and say God is unfaithful. His song and his praise will remain in my mouth. Let me teach you what to do, my brothers and my sisters. Please hear me. I show you a mystery that is more... Some of you is after one, two, three years, you will look for this message and listen again and say, here was my deliverance. Let me teach you this. Go and write a list of everything. We'll do some prayers now. Write a list of everything that ails you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Go and shut the door. If you cannot sing, find... Some of you need to find this Igbo high praise. You know this kind of praise that the woman prophesies before she starts singing. And lock yourself and dance around like a madman 
while you dance on that request and watch the God of wonder. All our walk, 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 is turning things around. Yeah. All our walk, 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 walk. Prophesy. All our walk, 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 walk. For my good. All things, all things, I am the believer. One more time. All our walk, 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 walk. Turning things around, yeah. Apostle, I was so disappointed. I thought the guy would marry me. Just when we we're preparing to go and see my parents, he said they told him not to marry me. Don't worry. Is he the only one on earth? I'm teaching you what to do. For as long as you look at what causes you pain, it will keep growing. You stand in front of your office that threw you out and you meditate on that office and the pain continues to increase and breaks your spirit. And the Bible says no man can indefinitely bear a wounded spirit. A wounded spirit is like hemorrhage. As you continue to bleed, you die. That's why people die slowly. We say they died of headache. No, they died of this sin, of losing joy. I was told of a true story that armed robbers came to someone's house. They were shouting, shooting guns, and so on and so forth. And the wife tapped him and said, armed robbers are there. And he said, what's the meaning of that? Why is she tapping him? And eventually she summoned courage and went out. You know, she was blasting in tongues and went out. And eventually the people ran away. She came back and met the man dead. Who died? Not the one who went to challenge the robbers. Fear. Fear. That guy's spirit bled and he entered into a state of coma and died. Your spirit is you. Some of you already are half dead. God brought you here tonight for that restoration. He restored my soul. He restored my soul. He does not restore your soul by giving you food. He gives you joy. Joy, exceeding joy, full of glory. That's why sometimes you see people under the anointing, you see them laughing. That is, that is, that is a surgery happening. They are laughing under the anointing. You don't know. They, that's mighty victory being wrought in the spirit. They don't know why. They are laughing on behalf of the, the, the Bible. Let me tell you, every time God is about to judge, he first laughs. Psalm 2. Let me show you something. We're about to pray. Psalm 2. Mighty God. Psalm chapter 2, please. And then we'll pray. Is God helping anybody this night? Psalm chapter 2. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Please shout it me now. Say in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that I will rejoice. No more crying. No more complaining. I maintain my joy because I know that it is in joy that intervention comes. That's how it works. Psalm 2. Look up. Why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. Against what? The Lord and his anointed. Verse 3 says, let us break their bands asunder. That's what they are saying now. And cast away their cords from us. Verse 4. Hallelujah. Read it if you are a Christian. One to read. He that seated in the heaven shall... Hold on. Now, that laughter is to activate power. You will see it closely. The laughter is not, be, is, is not sarcasm. Even God needs joy. For that... <laughs> the Lord shall have them in derision. Verse 5. Then he shall speak to them in what? 
Have you ever seen somebody who wants to fight and starts laughing? <laughs> you are not aware. That, that laughter is priming the power and the fortitude to fight. That's the kind of laugh the Bible says God is doing. It is true. This is scripture. That the Lord sits in the heaven and laughs. And immediately he will speak to them in his wrath. And vex them in his sore displeasure. In the midst of the pain, stay in joy. In the midst of the crisis, stay in joy. In the midst of the disappointment, stay in joy. Apostle, they robbed my shop and carried everything. Stay in joy. Don't lose your joy. You're about to lose everything. Apostle, my husband is threatening divorce. Stay in joy. Don't move around telling everybody something that they cannot solve. Stay in joy. Apostle, they just stole my car. Let me tell you how to get the car back. Stay in joy. Once you turn your face and start meditating on that pain, it starts growing. You will never have a car soon again. Apostle, they spoke about me and said all kinds of untrue things about me. Stay in joy. It's cheaper than explaining yourself. Stay in joy. Let God speak for you. Stay in joy. Hallelujah. I rejoice in the God of my salvation. I rejoice in the God of my salvation. The mighty one who can rise up and turn things around. Let me tell you something about God before we pray. Listen, don't get used to God's silence. He is quick. Don't get used to God's silence. God can arise like the mighty man that he is. And with a dimension of speed you cannot tell. He will come to your life and save you. Even his coming, the Bible it says, is in a twinkling of an eye. We are caught up. God is not slack concerning his promises. Apostle, where will I get the money to build my house? It's in your joy. Not in the bank. Your joy is a trusted source of finance than your bank. Where will the fresh anointing come upon? There are people who are anointed, but the anointing is not fresh. Joy. Joy. I have seen more miracles in my life as a result of joy than prayer. It's difficult for you to believe this. But it's true. I'm a man of prayer, you know. I pray a lot and I bless God for the grace to pray. But I know what joy does. I have used joy as the classic proof that God has answered me. When I pray and I don't have joy, I remain there. But by the time joy comes, though weeping endures for a night, how you know the morning has come is joy. How you know there is night is weeping. You don't use darkness to know it is night. You use weeping. Every time you cry, it's a testimony that is darkness. You don't use the brightness of the sun to know that it's morning. The moment joy begins to come, God is saying, you're morning. Ah. You have turned my morning into dancing. And you have turned my sorrow into joy. So, Apostle, how do I know it's a new season? Check your joy. Check your joy. The same way your joy ceases as proof that darkness is around you. You just know that I, I lost joy and I lost peace. Did the Bible not say every time righteousness, peace and joy coexist, the kingdom is within that place? I check my joy. The days many of you have, have allowed cheap victories to pass. And I'll tell you very quickly before we pray. You got up in the morning or in the middle of the night and you are happy for reasons you cannot tell. Has it happened to anybody here? You are so excited. I'm happy. You would have capitalized on that situation to establish the victory. But because you did not have understanding, even you, you were surprised. Let me tell you, your spirit had seen something in the realm of the spirit and it was passing it to you to act it out in faith so that it would be established. After crying over the rent issue, you just went to bed and you woke up with exceeding joy. That's the time to rejoice. 
because it means the father of spirits has gone somebody has woken up from his sleep because of you if you know what to do that's the time to say lord i don't know what you are doing but the joy is telling me my morning has come three things you do the moment the joy of god comes number one listen you verbalize it and declare words are powerful number two as god grants you grace if you can sow into that joy because when you sow into joy it can reap harvest immediately you reap in joy listen to me you can turn any situation around when you understand this mystery of joy it is an oil and it, that oil must come on someone's head today in the name of Jesus Christ joy this works for me very much every time God wants to bring a new anointing to my life there is extreme joy extreme I cannot explain sometimes it will last for days sometimes it will last for weeks and I begin to sense that God is calling me and in the place of prayer I'm not even interceding or praying for anything I know as that joy is happening I tell you sincerely listen to me pay attention to what I tell you is because new wine is being poured in you I know this the joy of the Lord is my strength I live a very busy schedule very busy schedule but his strength has kept me physically because of joy I rejoice Satan has lost it over my tears since he has no opportunity to see it again I have mastered the art of cheating life my tears God is faithful we're going to do three things right now number one we're going to rise and in the next five minutes my time is up but I will give you an opportunity by yourself and alone with God in this vigil you are going to find a way of singing a song of praise and say, Lord, my joy is back. I'm ready to win. I'm ready to win. I'm tired of giving my victory to the devil. I am a believer and I am strong. I obtain my joy back by faith. Some of you will need to sing songs. Some of you will need to stand and worship him and take your eyes away from the pain. Take your eyes away from the sickness. Take your eyes away from the bills. Take your eyes away from the budget. Take your eyes away for a while. They looked unto him and they were, their faces were lightened and they were not ashamed. And then number two, I will share one more scripture with you on how to have the fullness of joy. And then we will pray. I promise you that I will not keep you long. Can we pray? Rise up on your feet, please. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, it is my strength. joy God is bringing renewal refreshing bringing your dream alive again bringing your hope alive again letting you know that the God of heaven will never leave you he will never forsake you take your eyes away from the lack of children lack of this lack. just take your eyes away fix your eyes on Jesus Hallelujah. Now listen. 
I want you in the next two or three minutes just talk to the Lord and say my joy is restored I worship you I refuse to give up my joy I gave up my money I will not give up my joy I gave up my peace I will not give up my joy go ahead talk to God Shout! 2019, you came to receive a baptism of joy afresh. When there is no joy, there is no progress. When there is no fullness of joy, life will squeeze you into a mold and defeat you cheaply. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. I don't see the challenges, I refuse to see. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. There is power in your name. Come on, sing it, Mina. Hey. It's you that I see. You are here working miracles. I worship you. I worship you. You are here turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. Let me give you a reason to maintain your joy. Listen. We make a miracle walk. Promise King. Light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Hold on, guys. Rejoice knowing this. There is an information that you know. We make a miracle walk. Light in the darkness is not what you do, that is who you are. So I rejoice. What does it take, oh God, for you to give me a job? What does it take for you to give me a child? All it takes is your will. Your will, your willingness is the raw material. What does it take for you to bring me out of that situation? What does it take for you to exalt me? We make miracle walk, promise keep, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Listen, here's how Apostle Paul said it. He said, rejoice in the Lord always. It's not an advice, it's an instruction rejoice in the Lord always and in case you forget let me repeat again I say that means for your own good is a prescription to keep you in victory rejoice in the Lord but I found out that there is also a realm called complete joy you can have joy 
but not have the fullness of joy let me show you how to have the fullness of joy Jesus himself taught us John 16 24 never forget this scripture for the rest of your life we're going to read it together and then now we pray please read with me Mina ready one to read hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name ask and ye shall receive why that your joy may be full look up it is true that joy brings harvest but harvest too brings joy hello it is true that joy brings results but results too bring joy so I use my joy to get the results that will multiply my joy to get more results that will multiply my joy until my joy is full and Jesus said somewhere in your joy equation there must be receiving that there are times if you don't receive something your joy cannot be complete it is true that whether the house rent is there or not you should have joy but what if you rejoice with the house rent in your hand it is true that whether you have a house or not you should rejoice but what if you rejoice with the keys now in your hands it is true that you should rejoice whether the child comes or not but what if you stand and hold triplets let me tell you results can produce joy results can produce joy ask Sarah results can produce joy Ask the people who are about to be disgraced in a wedding feast when wine finished. Results can produce joy. Ask 5,000 hungry men minus women and children. Results can produce joy. Weep not thou that didst not bear. Burst forth into singing because many are the children of her that is without child. Let me tell you this. He says, ask, and that's what we are going to do now, that you may receive so that your joy, Mina, will be full. I loved God, whether I was anointed or not, and I truly had joy, but my joy is full now that he has anointed me because I am happy. Are we together now? I loved God, whether I had five naira in my pocket or not, but now at least I can bring out 10 naira to eat with. I am happy. Results can multiply joy. Results can prime your joy to the full. Many of you, your joy is on reserve. It's there, but it's on reserve. Some half tank, oh, we are butu sunk. Be tired of the knee level, the ankle level. You must insist that within these few minutes we have, Lord, I must leave shout 2019 with the fullness of joy the fullness of joy when that devilish sickness leaves your body it perfects your joy when God speaks to your life and destiny and opens the gates for you it perfects your joy hallelujah praise the Lord the woman at the well when she met Jesus she ran with joy and called other people and said come see a man that has shown me has told me what I have done your joy must be perfected. You are going to pray. What one thing do you trust God to do tonight for you to walk away with the fullness of joy? The Bible says, Hitherto, hitherto, you have not asked. But now we say, Ask so that you can receive. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. So ask so that you will receive, so that your joy may be full. Lift your voice, Mina, inside and outside. Please ask. Lift your voice and pray. I'm about to pray for you. Ask. Is any man afflicted? Let him pray. If you've been evil, know how to give good gifts 
to your children how much more will your heavenly father please ask ask for yourself some of you are asking for your ministry some of you are asking for your family outside make sure you are praying you are asking ask in faith Father, I rejoice, but place fresh fire upon my life for the sake of my ministry. Ask, Lord, turn my financial captivity around. Ask, turn my spiritual life around. Please ask, pray. some of you are asking that God will bring your family out from the bed of affliction like Peter said Pastor Peter was sharing he said some of you need God to solve foundational issues take the pain away oh God Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and sing. Yeah, yeah. Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice. Come on, Mina. Yeah. 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 You've taken the pain and the sorrow away You've given me peace undeniable There's no need to cry cause you're always with me You're my father, my everything yeah. Oh, may my He will take your pain away and then he'll give you joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and sing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Has come. Oh, 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 your rising has come. I'm prophesying. Oh, 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 your help has come. Oh, 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 your 
Very simple song says, I, 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 my help has come when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion we were like them that dream hear me then our mouth were filled with laughter laughter and said they among the hidden the Lord had done great things for them it says the Lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad then it says turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev it says that they that sow in tears they shall reap in joy I have about five minutes or so and I want to pray for you to lend my support in this program and I want you to release your faith within these five minutes because your life must change things will be redirected and reordered within these minutes you are under a very strong influence this morning that can turn things around the worshipers have come to set the atmosphere i've spoken to you about joy you are receiving first the oil of gladness it's a real grace you will find out that no challenge in your life will sustain the power to bring you to a point where you say God is unfaithful you will stand before what made you cry before shout and still laugh and say the Lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall I be afraid of shall not fear what man does to me I'm not an orphan there is a God in heaven Jehoshua the one who saves But I also know that tonight there will be restoration. I also know that tonight there will be healings. I also know and believe that tonight there will be accelerations. And the Lord will do this and bring honor and glory to his name. The Lord will do this and honor this program. Now let me pray for you. It's very funny what is about to happen now. Let me explain it before I pray. I have sensed in every meeting that I go to now, among the many prayers that I pray for the people, God continues to impress me to release the grace for speed. Let me tell you the truth, people of God, the king's business requires haste. We do not have all the time. Are we together now? Paul admonishes us to redeem time. That means if time is against you, there must be an advantage that comes upon your life. That's the first prayer. I want to pray this prayer for speed. And you will be amazed at the way many of you will make strange acceleration after this prayer. Spiritually, and then it follows every other area. Now, when I pray this prayer, listen very carefully. I don't intend to take our time. It's already morning. The hand of the Lord will come upon many people and you will find them physically running for some of them. I say this so that you please can help them. Praise the Lord that as you bring them, you are helping them so they don't injure themselves inside and outside. It must happen. It's the way God does it. I, I don't know why he does it. He just causes people to act out what is happening to them in the realm of the spirit. And some of you, this day will not break without you seeing the physical manifestation. You will finish the program and before you are going home, you are seeing text messages and all kinds of things coming. Every man ministers according to the measure of grace given to him. It's a sin to propose things you do not have the grace to defend. Hallelujah. Can I pray for you? I stand in agreement with your dear pastor and the men of God in this place and I want to pray for you now. Father, thank you because you honor your word and your name. 
I want to pray for you right now, my God. I'm already just seeing a cloud. I'm even barely lifting my hands and I'm just seeing fire fall on people. I'm going to count three. And the moment that happens, this grace for speed, it will be very fast. We may not be able to take testimonies from the prayer for the sick because we have to honor the remaining part of the meeting. But then at the same time, as I release this grace for speed, I pray by the God of heaven that let it produce in people's lives. Father, thank you for the anointing that you have granted. Your people need to be shifted to very strange levels. And I declare right now at the count of three, may that grace find a destiny and a family that must accelerate. Get ready now. One, my God. Two, three. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Please help them. Shadis Kaparusiata. I stretch my hands by the Spirit. I decree and declare. Can you bring them out if it's possible? I release that grace. Speed now. I shift you by the Spirit. Enter strange dimensions of spiritual possibilities. The Spirit of God upon you. Please help them. Speed by the Spirit of God. Speed in ministry. Speed in life. I declare it upon you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number two, I'm praying. Please bring them out if you can. I just want to pray very quickly. I'm seeing the Lord restoring. And I'm seeing quite a number of people, up to 31 people. God is saying, I'm restoring the years and restoring things you lost. I don't know where you are, but I stretch my hands right now. May that anointing rest upon you now. Sheparus Kabarata. I command restoration. Here at Shout 2019, I speak and I release that grace. Receive restoration now. Receive restoration now. Bring them out. Receive restoration now by the Spirit of God. Restoration now. And I will restore the years that the canker worm the palmer worm has eaten i speak by the spirit me now hear me i don't care what you have lost i stand by the god of heaven and i declare restoration to you now restoration now hallelujah please bring them out pastor sir not this man the other man yes you this one come no sir this man this very one no not you sir this man lift your hands the lord is restoring your fire and your grace step into a new dimension of fire and grace the lord is restoring that fire and that grace i want to pray now i'm seeing a grace for the prophetic in a strange way the eyes that see this will come on many people i'm praying right now at the count of three i want you to shout the name jesus i'm seeing ancient prophetic wells being stirred up again here at shout pastor Pedro prophesied and said that this is the center and out of this place will come a shofar to the nations at the count of three on men and women you must drink of that wine one two three shout jesus take that grace now let there be that staring from your spirit man in the mighty name of jesus i release that grace the front to the back outside enter that realm you have seen it in your visions you have seen it in your dreams shout 2019 i release that grace upon you the eyes that see and the ears that hear the lord is showing me oil coming on people's hands and the lord is saying it's a grace for results it's a grace for performance i pray for you i don't know who in the crowd inside and outside is under the sound of my voice 
but I'm speaking right now the mantle that must rest on you for strange results receive that grace in the name of Jesus receive it right now by the power of the Holy Ghost it comes on you like fire strange results in your life You reign, you reign, Elohim, you reign, you reign, you reign, Elohim, you reign, you reign, you reign, Elohim, you reign. Na 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 na, na 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 na, I decree and declare that every force that is not on of God sitting on anyone's destiny by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Be liberated now. Be liberated now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Please hear me. I'm speaking to everyone here. Whether politicians, business people, in ministry. Everything you should have achieved this year. Until now your hands is yet to do it. I stretch my hands. Obtain the grace, the finisher's anointing. You must finish it before this year is done. In the name of Jesus Christ I pray concerning everything that is dead or dying in your life hear the word of the Lord under this atmosphere of praise I command it to come back to life now in the name of Jesus Christ now if you are sick just lay your hands in your body make contact with your body let me pray now quickly i declare be healed in the name of jesus i take authority over every sickness every infirmity i cause it now in the name of jesus i decree and declare be free from it now and any orchestration that is not of the christ any influence those that are here in front and all who are watching and following I decree and declare any influence in your life that is not of the Christ I command it to leave you right now I command that it must release your destiny now now listen I want to release the oil of gladness it's a real grace it's a real anointing now thanks be to God which causes us always to triumph I pray for you here at shout 2019 let the grace that keeps joy in your life regardless of situations may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now receive joy joy unspeakable joy unspeakable joy in the midst of storms in the name of Jesus Christ let me pray for everyone who is part of the house of the rock family i decree upon you this oil of joy oil of gladness may it never depart from you it will produce marvelous results in your life in the name of jesus christ hear me let me speak to you whatever it is that morning took from your life may joy restore it now every family here trusting God for an open door I stand by the God of heaven between now and the next 21 days I'm prophesying to you by the God of heaven who anoints men may that door be opened unto you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit I connect you to the helpers of your destiny and in the name of Jesus, may they show up to hold your hands and lift you. 
I pray for everyone who is in ministry. Hear the word of the Lord. I speak to you. Enter a new season of results. Extraordinary results. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything you have lost, I command it to look for you and return to you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Finally, I speak over your life. The one thing you ask the Lord to do for you, to complete your joy in this meeting, I release my faith and I agree with you. May it be yours right now. May it be yours right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray finally for the body of Christ in Mina. Using this platform, in the name of Jesus, may the purposes of God as committed to this house and as committed to this city never be aborted. I declare that God will continually find a remnant from this city that will project the light and the power, the grace and the wisdom of God. And I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in this city will stamp the gates of hell and stamp the gates of darkness. In the mighty name of Jesus, I bless you by the Spirit. I bless you by the hand of God. I bless you with all spiritual blessings. May joy and laughter never depart from your mind. Never depart from your mouth. Never depart from your destiny. And every result that has been received in the realm of the Spirit, I command it to manifest in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Pastor Petrock, thank you so much. Mina, thank you so much. I love every one of you. In Jesus' name.